Stuart, tomorrow, uh, sorry, Monday, sees the beginning of your court case um, against the states of Jersey. Can you, t your civil case against the states of Jersey, can you tell us a little bit about it? Well, essentially what I'm doing is uh, suing um, a number of parties, including the Chief Minister, the State's Employment Board, the Attorney General and the States of Jersey. And I'm suing them for the unlawful actions they took against me in 2007 when they tried to improperly obstruct me and oppress me in carrying out my duties as Health and Social Services Minister. Uh, they did this in a crazed and misguided attempt to conceal Jersey's child protection failures and obviously I suffered a lot because of that unlawful actions of theirs. Um, I was simply trying to do my job properly uh, to represent uh, the interests of vulnerable children and these people obstructed me and uh, generally tried to do me down and that is the cause for which I'm going to court. Because you were the health minister at the time, you were saying when they tried to obstruct you and you were health minister at that particular time. Uh, absolutely, and when you are the Minister for Health and Social Services, you have certain statutory obligatory duties, for example, under the children law. So it isn't even a case of merely having a choice as to whether to investigate these child protection failures. You are legally obliged to. I was fulfilling that duty. I was acting lawfully in that early part of 2007. And by way of contrast, a number of senior civil servants uh, and the State's Employment Board and the Chief Minister and the States of Jersey were not acting lawfully because the Children Law 2002 actually expressly requires any other department of the States to assist the Health and Social Services Minister in investigating child protection failures. But instead of assisting me, they actually obstructed me. OK, so you're taking them to court for this. I suppose I've got to ask, um, do you think it's going to be successful in court? Your well, oh, of course it won't be successful. Um, the Jersey judicial system is fundamentally broken. It's politicised. All of the judges who sit in the Jersey judiciary, whether they're Indigenous or from the UK, essentially know the key players within the local establishment. So it doesn't meet that test of being objective and impartial. What's going to happen on Monday and perhaps Tuesday is that the other side, the Jersey establishment as it were, will be mounting a strikeout application against my action, which they will without doubt succeed in. My action will be dismissed. They will then misrepresent that strikeout to the public as, at large as being a dismissal of my argument and my claims, which of course it won't be. It will merely be a legal device they will have used to avoid a full detailed trial of the real factual matters behind the case. And they'll do this with the help of the local accredited media, accredited media one shouldn't wonder? Well, uh, of course. I mean, the, the, the mainstream media in, in Jersey, I mean, it's become a, a, a cliché, obviously, but uh, their performance of them has been extraordinary. Even a few years ago, we, people like us, and I think most thinking people in Jersey, realised how biased and in the pocket of the local establishment, the local media is. But certainly in the past year or two, the performance of the local media has been utterly extraordinary, including the broadcast media, which is actually supposed to be bound by law to be objective and balanced. And it's quite an extraordinary state of affairs. We have a situation now where a number of bloggers have done investigative journalism and have published the evidence, published the facts, that shows, that proves, the complete opposite to the lies that the local media, mainstream media, has peddled to the people of Jersey. And quite where this is going to end up, I don't know. Because effectively, the local mainstream media has proved its, its redundancy. Now, if you want to see the evidenced facts concerning the Jersey child abuse scandal and the cover-up, you go and look to bloggers. You won't find the truth in the local mainstream media, not even, sadly, the BBC. You're right. I agree. So getting back onto the court case, you don't think, uh, you know, you're going to be successful for one reason and another. So where next then? Where, where, when you're not successful in Jersey? Well, one way or another, we, those of us who are on the, on the right side, on the side of the public interest in this, we have to carry on fighting. And that means ultimately 
holding Jersey's public authorities, our very, very expensive public authorities, to account. We have to make sure that they do face their responsibilities and that they do in future perform to the public good, which they're not doing at the moment. Uh, the only way we're going to do that is carry on pursuing a number of different court cases. So quite regardless of what happens to this particular civil action uh, on Monday or Tuesday or whenever it may be concluded, some entirely new, fresh legal cases are going to be brought. One of those is going to be a substantive judicial review application, which I am going to table, that will focus entirely upon the unlawful suspension of the Chief Officer of the Jersey Police Force, Graham Power, Queen's Police Medal. That has to be reviewed. Jersey's public authorities won't do that. Indeed, have shown themselves incapable of addressing that matter responsibly. I'm going to take that to court and have it judicially reviewed. Secondly, the whole entire question of the gross failure of Jersey's public authorities towards vulnerable children over the years and the decades, and in particular, the particularly despicable cover-ups and failures of the last few years. That entire issue has to be inquired into. Now, we know the states have kind of talked about maybe doing a public inquiry into it. Well, clearly, any inquiry that the states did eventually initiate would go, was going to be a whitewash, and they won't be able to do it properly themselves. So, effectively, this judicial review application I'm going to bring into the child protection failures will be the independent public inquiry into the gross failure of all of Jersey's public authorities to properly protect vulnerable children. Uh, a third legal action which is going to be brought will be the action in London against the UK Justice Secretary. Now this has been attempted before, of course, and it was unsuccessful. Things are different this time. We have a lot more experience. We know how to frame the case better. It won't be only a judicial review application. It will also be an action in tort. And in particular, we have an awful lot more evidence at our disposal now, including, for example, various aspects of the conduct of the Wiltshire investigation, which was plainly illegal, the appalling conduct of BDO, what looks like prima facie breaches of the data protection law in respect of statements given to the Wiltshire investigation by the former Chief Constable, Mr Harper. We have now a number of affidavits from Graham Power, former Chief Constable, an affidavit from Mr Harper himself. We have a lot of powerful evidence that does in fact show a complete breakdown in the proper rule of law and the good administration of justice in Jersey. Now the UK Justice Secretary is either going to finally act to clean up this corruption or the UK Justice Secretary is going to have to defend all of these evidenced issues in court in London. Well, it's going to be very interesting. So, at the end of the day, we're trying to look at some kind of accountability, aren't we, for the public administration of Jersey, civil service, um, top civil servants. Why do you think um, that's such an importance the, the, to have this accountability of the whole question of accountability is of fundamental importance and although a lot of these issues focus around the plainly disgraceful failure of Jersey's public authorities to properly protect vulnerable children, people shouldn't be uh, losing sight of the fact that it's more than just that. And if our public authorities can't do something as basic as protect vulnerable children properly, you have to ask yourself in how many other ways are Jersey's public authorities failing? And of course most of us know that the state of Jersey is basically failing in many, many different ways. It's expensive, it's bloated, it's inefficient. There is simply no accountability. The civil servants are armour-plated, they are invulnerable, they are Teflon-coated. Anyone that dares to attempt to hold these very expensive people to account, as I did, simply gets clobbered and oppressed by the system. Even now, in fact, I'm getting more, frankly, ludicrous, uh, threatening letters from the Data Protection Commissioner because I might write that civil servants haven't done their jobs properly. And this is simply uh, a manifestly unlawful attempt to silence criticism of the government. We've seen just recently the former Chief Executive, Bill Ogley, a man who 
took part in the unlawful suspension of Graham Power, who shredded the notes and done, en engaged in a variety of other uh, deeply questionable activities, being sent off with a golden handshake of half a million pounds. Before he went, he signed off his friend, the former health chief executive Mike Pollard, with a golden handshake of £300,000. And these are both men who should simply have been sacked. Sacked uh, a couple of years ago, at least. But it's not only those two. That kind of simple invulnerability, that armour-plated lack of accountability, is endemic throughout all of Jersey's public administration. And that is massively to the disbenefit of ordinary people of this community. And it is that at the heart of this matter, this, this lack of accountability in Jersey's public administration. That is what we are fighting against and that is what we are going to fix.